Okay, time to start lecture 4.1. So this is the fourth week of the Domain Specific Languages of Mathematics course, and we will start talking about homomorphisms. So we'll start looking at the example, the exponential function. So the exponential function e to the power of um, is a, a common example and very useful in mathematics and in other disciplines. We've talked a lot about exponential gro growth during the last pandemic years. Uh, but here from the mathematical point of view, we first look at its type. So as usual, um, I like to analyze the type and uh, the exponential function takes any real number and produces a positive real number. So I denoted it here, the type of R greater than zero. So here are two, not definition cases, but two laws for the exponential function. The first is saying that e to the power of zero is one, usually written as the comment on the right hand side here. And the second law is that if you have an addition in the exponent, you can do a multiplication of the individual parts. So also that is usually written Mathematically, e to the power of a plus b is equal to e to the power of a multiplied by e to the power of b. So we're translating here from the real numbers to the positive real numbers, but it's more than just changing the type, it's also moving some structure and changing some structure. So with structure here, I mean algebraic properties. So we have the real numbers with addition and a zero. And we translate that to the positive real numbers with multiplication and one. And in general, this is a pattern that comes up very often. If we have a set A, here are the real numbers, some operator plus L, which here was the addition, and some zero, some operation or some number or some element of type A for which the plusal operator is uh, not does not change, then we can take a function h to some other type b. In the example, it was the positive reals, some crossal, and some unit u. And the expression, the logical expression, for what this actually is, is down here. So it says the first part is for all x and y in a. So for all pairs of real numbers, like a and b up here, if we apply age to the sum of them, we could alternatively apply age to the individual numbers, x and y, and then take the other operation. So here we could apply exponential to a and b, and then multiply the results. This is the first part, how to transform the operator. And the second part is how to transform the unit. So that's much simpler. There's no quantification, just says that the same function age should take the zero on one side to the unit on the other side. Okay, let's look in more detail. So I've made the left part, uh, the type A blue here, and the right part, the type B green, and I've tried to identify all the values we have and type check and then sort them into the blue or the green camp. So here we see the x, the y, and their sum as a values and also the zero. And then here we say, okay, if we move from the sort of the one world, the a world, using age, then we can take all of these expressions to the B world, the green world. And here we have age of x, age of y, and age of x plus y. That's for the operator, and then age of the um, zero as well. So all of these values are of type B, and all of them have the shape, function age applied to something we had on the left hand side. And then if we analyze the right-hand sides of the equations, 
we see that there are two more expressions. So there is the application of the crossal operator to age x and age y. So that's also a value of type B. And then u is a type value of type B. So we use the age function to translate these input values. And then we say that actually another way of getting to those same values is using some new operators that live in the B world. So now we have most of the type information, but not quite all. So let's move another slide forward. So I will write here, when there is a homomorphism, age, like you can write it as a, above an arrow, which goes from not only a type, but an, a triple of a type A, an operation and a zero, to a type operation and zero. And uh, we can summarize the information about what it should do with the, the operators in a predicate, which I will call H2. So H2 takes a triple and is a proposition. It's a logical statement, which may or may not be true for a certain collection of H plusle and crossl. So the first H, that's just a normal function from A to B. Then the operator is on the left side, the A to A to A type, and the other operator is completely on the right side from B to B to B. So the age is the bridge which takes us over from the A world into the B world. And the operator plus is completely in the A world while the cross is completely in the B world. So I just introduced this age too as an abbreviation because we will use it a lot further on. And the definition here was just the definition I had on the previous slide. And what we say from the example here, we can abbreviate that to say that, well, the exp function, the exponential function, satisfies H2 from real number addition to real number multiplication, and H0, which is a variant written below, uh, that the exp function relates 0 to 1, which is just means that H applied to 0 is equal to 1. But the general definition of the H0 uh, as this one. Okay, so we, we've started to see the building blocks and let's um, look at the wider picture. So this homomorphism X is not only a homomorphism, but it's even an isomorphism. That means that not only can we get from R to R greater than zero, but we can also get back. So that inverse is the log function. So we, and that is also an, um, a homomorphism. So that homomorphism has the opposite type. It takes the multiplicative positive real numbers to the additive or real numbers. So it's important that it's strictly bigger than zero because log of zero doesn't compute. Anyway, the, the rules for log are just the opposite from the rules of the exponential. So if you apply log to one, you get zero, just like x of zero was one. And the log of a multiplication is the addition of the logs. And this is the mathematical uh, usual notation for it. Um, historically, the logarithms were very important because when you didn't have computers, you really had to um, use logarithmic tables to do big computations of multiplications because addition is easier than multiplication. So then you did log and exp interchangeably. Okay, now if we abstract out from the particular example of the exponent and the logarithm, let's look at the three uh, pro predicates, propositions, h2, h1, and h0. And I also can, I made a note here that this is in the Domain Specific Languages of Mathematics book. This is section 421 and some exercises. So first, what is common? Well, all of them are propositions. 
and all of them act on one function of the same type A to B. And then what is changing? Well, this index, the 2 goes to 1 and 0, and that is the arity of the operator. So H2 means that this is a binary operator, and this is a matching binary operator in the B world. H1 means that this is a one-argument function, not a two-argument function, and this is the corresponding one-argument function in the B world. And finally, for zero, it's not even a function anymore, it's just a value of type A and a value of type B. And the quantification then matches the arity. So here is quantification of a two, one, and zero elements. And we can line them up a little to see the pattern here. I also renamed the plus with a ring and the cross with a ring to op A and op B to see even more of the pattern here. So the, these three predicates all relate an operation in the A world to an operation in the B, B world. And the index tells how many quantifications and also what type the operator has. So if the operator expects two arguments in the two case, one argument in the one case, and no argument in the zero case. So the operator is basically just the, the A value here. And in all three cases, H is a function from A to B. And as before, uh, this is about taking, uh, relating what the function H is doing on the result of some operation with how it's acting on the individual elements and then taking the operation there. Now, this is clearly abstract, even though we started on the exponential function. So I will go into some very concrete examples. I'll just make a little break in the recording.